Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on the fundamentals of control systems. Today we're talking about dynamic systems modeling. This is Endless Engineering, I'm Gus, so let's dive right in. In this video, we're going to talk about a suspension system. Let's think about your car. Your car has a suspension system mounted between the chassis or the body of the car and the wheel. Not really the wheel itself, but to the shaft that the wheel is connected to. Let's look at this simplistic diagram that I have over here. So this is this dotted thing supposed to be the wheel, as if we're not really looking at it. This is like the wheel well, and that's the car up here somewhere. And we have some sort of mechanism that's connected to the shaft or the wheel uh, that is providing stiffness, right? So this could be what you've heard of like a leaf suspension uh, or a wishbone suspension. It's just a mechanical element uh, that's typically multiple, you know, parts that are metallic that provides stiffness to the motion. Uh, we also have our um, damper, which is a hydraulic cylinder. So we have this cylinder that's connected. Part of it is connected to the chassis of the car. The other part is connected to the wheel or the shaft. There's hydraulic fluid in here, and there's this cute little piston that I've drawn here that when this moves around, when the motion is transmitted, then it, it dampens the motion itself, right? Because the hydraulic fluid, when you compress it, it pushes back on you, and it absorbs... Uh, the energy. This is the shock absorber, essentially. Okay, so this is a simplistic drawing, but how do I go from that to a model of my suspension system, right? So here, uh, again, just like our previous video on the DC motor, we are going to make some assumptions, and we're going to say that they're idealized components, right? So I have some assumptions. Some assumptions. I have some assumptions. All right, one, uh, the wheel is rigid, right? This may not be 100% true because there's the wheel and then there's the tire. Uh, let's just make that assumption for now. Um, two, I have um, uh, Coulomb damping. And this means that the damping uh, in this hydraulic cylinder is proportional to uh, the velocity. And three, I have a linear spring stiffness. Right? That means the amount of force is applied to uh, this uh, mechanical spring or mechanical system that provides rigidity is linear with the force applied. So it has the slope of that uh, line would be the stiffness of the system. Okay, these are my three assumptions, right? So how do I model this? Okay, so I have my My vehicle itself has a mass, right? Oh, by the way, for mass is Constant Right, this is the assumption that nobody's jumping out of the car Hopefully nobody is but you know if this is a car that's like uh, changing or doing rides, changing number of passengers when it stops and picks other people up, this model might not be the best, right? So you're going to have to know the mass a priori. So I have this mass. Connected to this mass is this spring, which is my suspension, you know, wishbone or leaf or whatever it is. And I have my damping, right? And those are both connected to this wheel that is on the ground. Now, that's a very small wheel, but whatever. This is exaggerated to show you that, let's call this K and C, right? So, I have this linear spring where I apply the force to, it will react to it. And by that, I mean that this is the force applied to the spring. Uh, sorry, this is the displacement applied to the spring, and this is the force. And you'll see that it looks something like this. The slope of this would be K, the stiffness of the spring. And I have also a damper which has a similar relationship but with velocity right it's also linear okay so i have this force uh, of the road fr okay there's this force that the road is applying to my system okay and i have a damper and i have a stiffness now if this damper if this uh, cylinder was in here and if this suspension was in here this force would be directly transmitted right because the wheel is assumed to be rigid so if I drew my free body diagram in that case, 
my mass would have the force directly applying on it from the road, right? And that's not good because your passenger, if the car is very stiff, your passenger is not going to be happy with that, right? You're going to be sitting there. Nobody wants to sit and ride this really bumpy and really bad. But also, you want to design your suspension based on what the car is going to do, right? Typically, for sports cars, suspension is more stiff because you have certain characteristics of the vehicle dynamics, etc. We're not going to go into that. Let's just say that this is my model. How am I going to model those two things, right? So when this force is applied from the road onto my mass, the whole vehicle mass, you've pushed back on it, right? The spring will push back with a force from the spring and the damper will push back on a force from the damper, right? So these three forces combined tell me how the motion, this is X, the direction of motion of my mass is up and down. So you're sitting in the car, the motion that you feel in the car going up and down is going to be dictated by all these three forces, right? So we say summation of forces in the x direction is going to be my mass multiplied by my acceleration vector. In this case, it's really a scalar. Um, this is one direction, but uh, it's not really a scalar. It's a vector in one direction. Anyway, you get the point, uh, which is equal to uh, m x double dot. Uh, again, here the dot operator displays the derivative over time. So anything I put a dot on top of means it's the derivative over time. So mx double dot is equal to the summation of forces. So my fr is in this direction, which is in the same direction as I'm measuring my motion in. So that's going to be positive, the force from the road. Now you could choose to flip that. It doesn't matter. You could choose to say that my motion is positive downward. That's just your frame of reference. In this case, it, this would be a negative value. So, but the way we have it set it up is positive motion upward. Uh, the damping force and the stiffness force from the spring will operate with a negative value. So like I said, with our idealized components, we are assuming that the, um, well, this friction, this is FR, this is, uh, sorry, this is not friction, this is the road, uh, normal force. Uh, we're assuming that this damping force is C times X dot. So this is Coulomb damping. Um, and this x, uh, this x is the same as this x, sorry, um, the velocity. And we have this stiffness, which is k times x. So like I said, this displacement, which is in our case x, right, dictates the force. So the more I pull on this uh, spring or push on this spring, it reacts to a counter force that is equal to the spring constant or the spring stiffness times displacement and this piston every time I act on it with a velocity it will respond back with a um, force that is proportional to its damping uh, constant and this is the force from the road. So now rearranging we get this equation. So this is a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients because mass, damping, stiffness are seem to be constant and it's not homogeneous, right? If you've ever taken a course in uh, differential equations, the order of the differential equation you know is related to how many derivatives you have. So it's second order, we have largest order, largest derivative is two. And we have constant coefficients. These coefficients are constant and they dictate our system. And the non-homogeneity refers to that there is a term on this right-hand side that's forcing this equation to do stuff. So this is our suspension system. Given the mass of the vehicle and the stiffness of the suspension and the damping of the uh, shock absorber, uh, and assuming all these assumptions where the wheel is rigid, uh, we have Coulomb damping, we have a linear spring and constant mass, you can describe the motion of that mass in the x direction given the second order differential equation. Now we made the assumption here that uh, the wheel is rigid, right? This may not be a realistic assumption for some systems. So I challenge you to go do this as homework. Go and assume that 
this wheel is no longer uh, rigid, that it has some sort of stiffness, k wheel, and derive the equation of motion for this mass again. And if you get it right, send it to us at endlessengineeringphd at gmail.com, and we will give you 50% off of some new merchandise that we're introducing online that has a lot of endless engineering swag. I hope you enjoyed this video on the modeling of suspension system of a car. Next video we're going to talk about something really interesting that's not essentially mechanical or electrical in nature. Make sure you subscribe to Endless Engineering and click the bell that way you'll get a notification when we roll out our new videos. Thanks for watching.